My talk today, or the topic that I talked today about, was the safety, oncologic safety, of a minimally invasive approach in the treatment of early stage cervical cancer. Um, even though we knew from many retrospective data that uh, patients who have had a laparoscopic or robotic radical hysterectomy, they had lower complications, had a shorter hospital stay, and that's why in a broader basis we had an establishment of the minimal invasive approach worldwide, nationally and internationally. We never had a prospective randomized trial that actually proved the oncologic safety of the minimal invasive approach. And for that reason, for the first time, there was a study, a phase three multicenter study conducted by Pedro Ramirez uh, from MD Anderson, who practically took patients, around 600 patients, half of them had, were allocated to have a minimal invasive surgery, either laparoscopic or, or robotically, and uh, the other half had an open radical hysterectomy and lymph node dissection. The study had to be finished early, had to be terminated early, uh, earlier than initially thought. Why? Because of, an unsa of the unsafety of one arm. The investigators initially thought it was a problem probably with the open arm in terms of complications, but uh, what turned out to be was that the laparoscopic slash robotic arm, so the minimally invasive arm, showed a significantly higher risk for death and recurrence compared to the open arm. And that's why the study was terminated for lack of oncologic safety of the experimental arm. What was very interesting to hear from the actual investigators of the study is that when they initially started the study, many centers didn't want to participate in it because they said, why will I offer an open surgery to somebody who can have it minimally invasive? So it was a very important study that showed actually that quality of surgery and type of surgery matters for the life of patients. If not, this is what the study uh, showed. Uh, we have now clear data in a prospective randomized design that uh, with a hazard ratio of six, so six times higher risk of death from the, from the minimally invasive arm. We have to say that uh, the majority of the patients in the minimally invasive arm had a uh, laparoscopic approach and not a robotic approach. There were no differences in terms of um, parametrial invasion, vaginal resection margins, adjuvant treatment, so the patients were very well balanced between the two groups. And that's why it's a study that we cannot anymore ignore and we have to discuss with our patients before we treat them and decide how to operate on them. I did an international survey of the records of key opinion leaders worldwide, which I also presented, that showed that uh, most of people throughout America, USA, so USA, um, Europe, Asia, Australia, what they will do is that they will abandon doing uh, radical hysterectomies at least for larger tumors, more than two centimeters. Many people will just abandon them completely. Um, teams who are mainly operating robotically they are more reluctant to abandon the robotic approach and they say that the study was mainly about laparoscopy and not about robotic. So many of them will rather um, continue, but of course after discussing with the patients the risks and benefits. Apart from the prospective randomized trials, there were two other retrospective meta-analyses that, that were presented in ASCO and HGO a few months ago that showed that um, in thousands of patients in national registry databases in the US. In retrospective uh, fashion, also the robotic approach was significantly worse um, in terms of survival, PFS and OS, so risk of death and risk of recurrence, uh, also in a retrospective design. So what will happen now within the BGCS is that we will do a national audit to see how our data in the UK are and uh, how we're going to change practice based on this new data. There are many theories. One theory is the vaginal manipulation, because when you do a radical hysterectomy, minimally invasive, you somehow need to have a vaginal manipulator to be able to move um, the uterus. Many centers of the LAC trial, this is the trial of uh, prospective randomized design, they did not use any vaginal manipulator, so we don't know whether this is, uh, this is the cause. CO2 can be a possibility. Um, we don't really know. The final publication is submitted and accepted from the New England Journal of Medicine, so perhaps we'll have more data than uh, what just presented in us in SGO, but we need to see. I don't think we'll be able to answer why.